In this video we're going to be looking at an uh, easy example for Newton's first and second law. What we have here is a box on wheels that we assume to be perfect so there's no friction and then there's a force pulling on the box uh, with 50 Newtons at an angle of 30 degrees. So the first step as always with this type of problem is uh, to draw the free body diagram. So I'm going to be isolating my box and whenever I cut through something there will be a force. So I'm cutting here through the force. So if I do my free body diagram that means I will have a force F here at an angle of 30 degrees. Then I was cutting away the surface, which means I will have a normal force and the friction. Well, friction in this case is zero, so no friction, but we have a normal force always away from the surface towards the object. So my normal force goes up here. And then, as we are on Earth, we have the weight, or the force of gravity, straight down. G is straight down. And that's my free body diagram. Now what I can add is I can assume which way I think it's going to be accelerating. I think this box will accelerate to the right. So I draw next to my free body diagram, not connected on it, my acceleration. So first step is done. Free body diagram is done. Second step choose a coordinate system. So here it looks like a regular coordinate system. We'll do the trick. Third step, the law is involved. So I have gravity, so I will have the law of gravity, Fg is mg. Well, the title kind of gives us away. I'm going to assume that there is Newton's first law involved. So all forces must be zero, then the acceleration must be zero. And Newton's second law must be involved. If the sum of all forces is not zero, then the acceleration is proportional to the force with, linked with the mass. So laws are there. Step four. Splitting the whole thing up in components. So I have x component and I have the y component. So in y direction, what are my forces in y direction? I have the normal force goes in y direction. I have gravity in my direction, that's Fg, and I have the y component of my force here, so plus force y is, well, in y direction, do I have an acceleration in y direction? No, an acceleration is in x direction. So the law for y should be that the sum of all components in y must be zero. I'm assuming that my box will not move up and down, will only start sliding to the right. In my x direction, however, I assume I have an acceleration in the x direction, so sum of all forces in x is not zero, but an a. And then what are my forces in x direction? Well, only my pull. It's a different color. F, x, x component here. Is equal to m a. Okay, next step, I'm looking at the direction. Is my x component in my positive x direction? So the answer is yes, so plus. And how can I calculate my component fx based on my force? This is the adjacent of it, so I have force times cosine 
of the angles, in this case 30 degrees, is equal to, now I also have to check this maceration in positive direction. If yes, I put a positive. If maceration would be the other way, into negative direction, I would have to put a negative here. A on my y direction I have my normal force going up I have my Fg going down I can plug in my uh, equation Fg is minus mg and then I figured out my y component is positive going up so plus F, and now how do I figure out this one? This must be sine of the angle. Equals zero. And I can solve. So I have 50 newtons, or I want to solve for the acceleration, so let's solve it first by letters. So F acceleration is force force times cosine 30 over the mass. So my acceleration will be 50 newtons times cosine of 30 over 10 kilograms, which gives me four point three meters per second square. On the other side, I will solve for my normal force. So my normal force is equal to mg minus my force from sine 30. Interesting feature here. Often people think that the force is always equal to gravity. It doesn't have to be because here I'm pulling a bit upwards. Therefore, my normal force is less than the weight of the object. So in my case, I had a mass of 10 kilograms, that was 9.8 newton per kilogram, minus 50 newtons times sine 30. So what do I get? Uh, I get 98 newton minus 25 newton. Double check. Minus five seventy three newtons. So components are checked. Then five actually already solved it. Solve it. Solve it. So that's done. Six. Check it. Thus, the answer makes sense. So, I had forces in the range of 50 and 100 newtons of weight, or 98 newtons of weight, so I think the, the, the magnitude makes about sense. I had a mass of 10, 50 newtons, so 50 by 10 would be 5, so also my expression seems to make sense. Another check I can do is I have cosine on the left side, that means I have sine on the right side, yes, that is true. I can also think what would happen if I would pull directly to the right. If I would pull directly to the right, I would have force times cosine zero. Cosine of zero is one, so all my force would then be translated directly into an acceleration. And sine of zero is zero, so then my force wouldn't play here. So if I would pull only horizontally, my normal force would be equal to the width. Last thing I could check, I could check the, the units. Newton per kilogram is Newton per kilogram is equal to meters per second squared. So Newton per kilogram. Uh, a Newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared divided by the kilogram. So yes, I get meters per second squared. So I'm very confident that 
my answer is correct.